already pre-saved a particle system that was saved out of uh, X particles. And I'll display again the velocities. And if I zoom in and uh, look at it, they are moving in all directions. On each frame, I have a sample, which is good. Uh, that means that they are loading explicit positions and velocities on each frame. Now, if I go to the uh, options for playback graph, enable playback graph, and say, I'm going to play from frame, I don't know, let's say um, 80. I can uh, probably just uh, keyframe that one here, and then go on to frame 90 on this one. This is 90. Uh, now I have actual animation that is playing only uh, those 10 frames of uh, uh, a period of time. Obviously much slower, it's 10 times slower pretty much. And when you start looking at those particles, obviously these particles don't really have any information to read between uh, the frames. They find the file on frame 80, and then the next one that they find, uh, the, the, the find is 81, but they find it on frame 10. That means that when they're moving around, you see them then uh, moving linearly in one direction, and then they're skipping and jumping and changing direction. So every 10 frames, they're doing click, click, and moving a little bit sideways. And that's not ideal. Uh, what is happening really is we're taking the original position of the particle, and for the next 10 frames, we are taking the velocity and projecting forwards. And then it turns out that the particle actually was moving on a curve and went here. So the particle actually jumps to that new position and start extrapolating forward with the next velocity. And that's why we're getting these uh, uh, abrupt changes. Not very abrupt, but still they're visible, especially here. So in order to reduce this effect, we can enable the interpolate subframes option. Now we're actually reading the previous and the next frame and doing a cubic interpolation of the position according to that. So even though the velocity is still straight in one direction, uh, the positions are not jumping. But in order to do this, you also need an ID channel in your particles to be safe in order to track which particle is which in each of the two frames, because particle might get born and might die, and you cannot just go by order, by index. You want to track, OK, this is particle 125. Where is it in the, this file? Here. Where is it in that file? There. This is my interpolated position in between. So when you're slowing down, with, especially when you have uh, extreme motion with lots of curvature, you should probably check the interpolate subframes as long as you have an ID channel there. 